Hello there, everybody. This is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me on my channel today. Today, I am creating a layout for the Confessions of a Paper Addict Cut Files, 20 Days of Christmas and Summer Cut Files. Today is day 10, and I am making a Christmas layout today. However, the prompt for both the Christmas and the summer layouts was the same today. It is white background. So you see, I am using some pattern papers in the background, and these were papers that were in a stash I have of assorted Christmas papers. I have a pink one in the background, and then I have a green one layered on top of it, and I gutted those in case I wanted to use the papers on the layout. And now I am fitting my white background, which is a gessoed piece of white cardstock onto the background. I wanted to cut it to the correct size. The cut file that I'm using today that you saw and is now sitting over to the right is called a Christmas Bauble Wreath and that is of course a Confessions of a Paper Addict cut file. I use white paper to make the cut file and I have backed that cut file with paper from a six by six inch pad and it was a bow bunny pad called Christmas in the Village. I'm using some Lindy Starburst sprays and I'm going to put them in a circle around the background to go right behind the wreath. The colors that I'm using are Cockle Bells Coral, Cotton Candy Pink, and Saltwater Taffy. I think that all three colors look really nice together and I was looking for some pink sprays. I have a lot in my collection, but none of them seemed quite light enough for when I want to make a subtle background. So I ordered some Lindy sprays and I think that these three colors go very well together. And I've been using them a lot on Christmas layouts because as you probably know, pink is very in for Christmas themed papers. I'm using the packaging technique I am using all three colors and spreading them around the background. I like to have more than one layer of color, and I just think that that adds to the richness of the background. Now that the background is dry, I'm doing my favorite thing, which is sprinkling some water over the background and then using a paper towel to lift up some of the water, and it makes a cool effect where the water droplets are lifted up. And I have to apologize for all the light that's streaming in through the window. It's a little overwhelming on video, sorry about that. Luckily, it doesn't last for too long. So I'm taking all three of those colors of pink that I use and I'm putting some splatters on the background. Earlier, you may have seen that I use a baby wipe on the background. I use the baby wipe to clean up some splatters that were in spots that I didn't want the splatters in, but then I also continue to use it to soften the edge of the large areas of color a little bit, and I thought that that worked nicely to blend the sprays, the areas that have sprays on them into the background. I added a few more of the splatters of water, and now I'm going back and I'm adding a few more splatters of color. And I use my heat gun to dry the color in between layers, and then I also make sure that the layout is dry before adding splatters. Otherwise, the splatters aren't defined, they uh, just become part of the background. I wanted to add a little texture to the background. You really don't see too much of this on the final layout, but I do like to add texture as much as possible. So I'm using this stencil that I made using a silhouette cut file and I'm putting the modeling paste on top of the areas of color. I extend the modeling paste out a little bit past where the pink is, but not too much. I try to keep the modeling paste in that spot. And I'm putting a very thin layer, so this dries very quickly. In order to keep my mixed media backgrounds flat, I will run them through my laminator. I have a mink laminator and I run them through at least once, sometimes twice. But once the modeling paste goes on there, I don't think you can really run it through the laminator anymore. Maybe you can, but I haven't attempted that. So I like to let the background air dry. And so the fact that there was a thin layer helped it to dry fairly quickly. The heat tool, as wonderful as it is, it does tend to add to warping of the paper. And now I'm using some watered down white acrylic paint and I am splattering all around the areas of color. 
I don't know if you can tell on the video, but those Lindy sprays are very shimmery and I like that, especially for a Christmas layout. Now I was thinking that in order to embellish the layout, I wanted to add some holly leaves to the wreath. So I use my two holly punches. One is a Martha Stewart punch. That one has two holly leaves on it and the other is a McGill punch. And that one has three holly leaves on it. And so I like combining those two. Uh, they're about the same size. And I'm using that green piece of paper that I used on the background, the gutted piece. So I punch the holly leaves out of that. And once I have all the leaves punched out, I ink the edges with some Distress Oxide. I used mowed lawn and pine needles. In addition to using that green paper that I had gutted from the paper that I used in the background, I also used one of the six by six inch pieces of pattern paper from the Bow Bunny collection to punch out the leaves. So there are two different pattern papers and two different colors of Distress Oxide used on those holly leaves. And I think that just adds a little bit of interest to the layout. Even if when you first look at the layout, you don't notice it, or you might never notice it when you're looking at the layout. But I think that those little details can make a layout more interesting. I hope that it makes it more interesting anyway. So I am attaching the holly leaves down to all the ornaments. And then I wanted to pop up the whole wreath on some foam. And since it's all made up of circles, I thought, why don't I just cut out a whole bunch of foam circles and then stick them down to each of the ornaments on the back. So that's what I did. I punched out a circle and made sure it was the correct size and I use it as a template. And then I cut out all of these circles and I peel off the backs and I stick them down to the wreath. And I thought that this worked out really well and it went pretty quickly. And then once I had put all the circles down on the wreath, I just used some of the scraps and I filled in the area that has the holly leaves. And then once I have the wreath all ready to go and popped up on some foam, I assemble the background. I am using a lot of adhesive to attach that mixed media background to the pattern papers that I already layered. I just feel that putting a lot of adhesive helps it to lay flat. Before I attach it down, I use some mowed lawn and I ink the edges. And now I'm putting some ATG adhesive on the back of the wreath. And then I'm going to stick that down onto the layout right over where I have all of the mixed media. And I really like using the ATG adhesive on foam because I am constantly moving things around and readjusting things. And this allows me to peel the wreath back up again if I would like to. I had a leftover holly leaf, so I put it where I thought there was kind of an empty area on the left side of the wreath. I wanted to add some berries to the holly leaves and the paper punches punched out little circles that you could use for the berries, but I decided that instead I wanted to use some self-adhesive pearls. I had several different colors of red in my stash, so I'm grouping the self-adhesive pearls in threes. And even though all of the reds are similar, I'm using all of the different colors. And again, I just thought that that would make the layout a little bit more interesting. And I use glue to attach down those self-adhesive pearls. They do have adhesive on them, of course, and usually that holds them down, but I just feel better putting some glue on there. That way I know that they're going to stay down there. Now I wanted to add a little bit more of something to the wreath. So I'm using this Martha Stewart punch and I'm punching out some very small pine branches. And I'm using, again, a piece of paper from that Bow Bunny collection. And then I'm using Distress Oxide in Stormy Sky. And I ink the edges of all of these pine branches. And once they're all inked, I begin placing them on the layout. I already had a lot of green on the layout. There's the holly leaves. Those are, of course, all green. And then some of the ornaments are back with some green paper. So I wasn't sure if I should do this, but I decided to go with blue instead of green and I was pretty happy with the way that it turned out. I think that it goes along well with the layout and it keeps there from being a green overload. So I arrange all of these pine needles around the wreath and then I go around with some gel glue and I attach all of them down 
to the background. And I just whisked it away, but I'm going to be scrapbooking a photo of both of my daughters on Christmas Eve of last year. First, I mount the photo on some white cardstock. And I was looking through the paper pad and I found that there was a dark teal color and I thought that it might look nice if the teal was mixed together with the blue pine needles that were already there because the color was pretty close but it just again made it interesting that there are two different colors of pine needles so I punched out a whole bunch more of those pine needles and I'm tucking them around the layout and mainly putting them close to the lighter blue pine needles that I had already placed on the layout and I was thinking that I should really make more use of this Martha Stewart pine branch punch it's so fast to punch things out as opposed to cutting them out with my die cutting machine and not that I mind cutting things out with my die cutting machine but when you're making multiples of the same thing it is very handy to have a punch as I'm sure you know so then I backed the photo again on some of the blue paper that I had used to make the pine needles and then I used some foam and I popped up the photo on some foam I'm putting some adhesive on the back of the photo and I just position it right in the center and I was thinking about putting it on an angle but I decided to just be boring and make it straight. I, I just really like wreaths and I make them a lot and I always tend to, I don't always, but I often tend to put the photo just smack dab in the middle. I needed to add a title so I found this title that says Joyful that was from a foam sticker sheet from the Simple Stories Simple Vintage Rustic Christmas collection and I like it but I'm feeling that even though it says joyful it's so small and it doesn't really like feel so joyful so I leave that there for a little while I put some foam underneath it and I pop it up and then I realized and I can't believe I didn't realize it sooner that the holly leaf was positioned in the wrong place so I finally recognized that and I switch the orientation of my photo so that the holly leaves or the large holly leaf would be on top of the photo and then I moved that joyful sticker to the top and I add some photo corners I used uh, EK success scalloped photo corner punch and I punched out photo corners in four different colors and then I moved the title to the top of the photo and I know that the large holly leaf that's on the cut file probably was meant to go at the bottom of the wreath but I kind of liked it on top. I wanted to add a little something to each of the photo corners so I got out some dew drops in clear from Want to Scrap and I put some little dots on each of those photo corners. Whenever I have a wreath or something circular on the center of a layout I always feel like the corners need something so I use this EK success punch and I punched out these little corner scrolls or they might be photo corners but I always end up using them for situations like this where I need to put a little something in a corner and I ink the edges with mowed lawn distress oxide then I add a dew drop in a slightly larger size than the one I used on the photo corners to each of these corners and then I decided to switch out the title I didn't like the way the background of joyful was off-white it was too small so I switched it out for another title from Holly Days another simple stories collection and that completes this layout here are some close-ups I forgot to mention that I added these little fussy cut birds to the layout I hope you enjoyed this process video Please take a look in the description box where you will find links to the channels of all the other scrapbookers who are creating layouts with these beautiful cut files. And you'll also find a link to the Confessions of a Paper Addict Etsy shop. I hope everybody has a great day. I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.